Let's talk about effective evaluations. Hello, I am Dwayne Jackson. I am with Bold Literary Talkers Toastmasters Club 708973 Hyde Park, Chicago. I've been a Toastmaster for about seven or eight years. This video is going to be about evaluation and how to be more effective with it. And I'm, I'm, this is why it's going to be important to you because this is going to help you become a better evaluator, but then also for you to hopefully uh, receive evaluations better. And we're going to go through the manual a little bit. I try to make this video quick, but this is going to be important because the average Toastmaster, I heard the statistic that they join the club and after three speeches, they end up quitting the organization. And I believe that is because one of the reasons is because many people don't receive really effective evaluations that will help them grow. So imagine how much your life would change and how much you could be more better if, or your life would be better if you were three times more confident in your ability to evaluate and help other people. Also imagine how would your life be different or better if, 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 if you were able to receive better evaluations and then build upon it. If you knew your strengths, you knew what your weaknesses were. So let's get into it. So one of the first things I want to say before I go through the book here, because we're going to really go through this PDF. This is the effective evaluation by Toastmasters. This is the guide that they have available. So I'm just going through it so many times we don't go through this manual. And it's pretty short and to the point. So I want to get to that. But before we get into that, I want to say a few things, a few, a few quick points that are important to me that I learned as an evaluator. All right. So first of all, I think a mistake that many evaluators make is they come in with what's called a whitewash. A whitewash wash is when you you just tell the speaker that everything was good and they couldn't have done anything better it's the best speech i heard and you're the greatest speaker of all time that's one mistake that most people make you cannot you do not want um it's not how effective is it if i gave a speech and you you're not giving me any areas to work on you know so now i don't know how to build now you're giving me false information so when i go out into the real world and now they're not going to respond like my speech was great so now i i'm you're, you're preparing me to fail so that's something you got to be aware of second mistake that a lot so so you got to find an area where people can improve find a strength find an opportunity there's always somewhere people can improve so even if it's the best speech in the world dr martin luther king i have a dream there's things he could have done to improve always fine if it's a great speech say hey you know what you should have recorded the speech if they you know tell them hey you you, you should have you know uh, not that and you don't even say you should have because should is a bad word because there is no complete right or wrong but just say, you know, and when I'll get to that a little later on, on ways where you can give the suggestion without with you making it personal and not sounding too uh, defensive. But you always want to find something where they can improve. Second mistake most speakers make is they make the mistake of of actually trying to repeat too much of what the speaker said. I know you've heard those speeches. Oh, and they, they say, yeah, well, the first thing you said was one. And the first, then the second number you get your second point was the second point. And they just repeated the speech. Do not repeat. People have already heard the speech. You do not need to repeat the whole speech and then try to give one small thing that they can improve at the end. Like that's just really wasted some time. So try to avoid that as well. Okay. So don't be all positive. And two, let's not repeat everything the person says and the third one is let's not you know try to make sure, make it seem like everything the person did was bad right I, you don't see a lot of that but i'm pretty sure some people do that i had one guy one time i never forget i gave a speech he said did you write the speech down i said yeah i, I wrote the speech down he said you know what he said how about you take he said let me see your speech and i showed i gave him the paper he grabbed my speech and he you know what he did he ripped the speech up and he said and he tore it up he says that was a c rate speech at best you know now i'm you know now now that and, you know, it made me want to walk out of the room. Now, you know, there's people I'm pretty sure doing that. Now, don't get me wrong. I was at an advanced club and I was competing in a contest. But I will tell you, speeches like that, people, I'm pretty sure there's people that are harsh like that. You probably have seen them. You do not want to be that guy. You still want the person to leave feeling positive and motivated that they got something that they can specifically work on and they got a strategy on how to get better. All right. So those are the main things I want to talk about. So now let's begin to go through the book and see what the book has to say. All right, so some of the first things it says, 
All right, so when you are the speaker or the leader that you can do certain several things to make sure that you receive the most benefit. Oh, so I want you to guess three. All right, so there's some things that you can do to make sure that people get the most benefit every single time you speak. All right, so first, the first thing it says, inform the evaluator and the vice president uh, of education your goals. So this is one of your jobs. So let's say if you're the person uh, that is being the speaker, you are the person that's going to be evaluated. You want to have a meeting with your evaluator before you give the speech let them know say look this is what the goals are for the book but I may have some different goals too you know I want you to look out for am I moving my hand too much am I uh, making too much noise or am I fidgeting or leaning too far to the right so say these type of things you may have something specific that you want the speaker to the evaluator to look out for tell your evaluator any specific points you want for them to review that's what I just said during the evaluation all right listen carefully to the evaluator if you're the speaker you want to look directly pay attention take some notes don't worry about judgment don't worry about because sometimes we take stuff personal look when people there's gonna I know that you heard the speaker the evaluator that comes and says you know what you were horrible or you were great or yeah I didn't like this you should have did that listen take none of it personal because two people can evaluate you and it could be completely contradicting what they say I had one person walk up to me he said you know what you were I love your your animation that was my favorite part you were so live with your gestures I walked up to another evaluator he said you know what I hated the evaluate I hated your your I mean and you were too animated I just couldn't take it so never take anything personal okay because it's these are individual people's opinion so you know but carefully consider this stuff and then it, it's, it's good that you evaluate uh, your own efforts as well usually you can tell if you achieve the purpose uh, and you're most likely to be aware of the mistakes that you made after each speech uh, you want to write down if you were pleased or not right and, and, and rate yourself to see if you know okay my storytelling is three this week but now I feel like it's at five so evaluate yourself as well all right and speak with the evaluator after after the meeting that's the opportunity for you to ask questions about the evaluation that you receive and let's not attack the evaluator either okay however if you believe that the some of the suggestions for improvement um, you know were not mentioned or you need more details that's your opportunity uh, to discuss that with them all right now also let's say if you are the evaluator those roles will switch up as you're the evaluator it's important that you reach out to the, the speaker and say, how can I help you? Is there anything you're looking for outside of what's in the book? And when you do deliver your evaluations, deliver it from the manual. Sometimes people just say, oh, well, my opinion is this, my opinion is that. Are you coming from the manual? If the, if the manual's objective was for the young to use visual aids, are you judging or, or critiquing based on the visual aids? Because sometimes we'll be critiquing based on, well, you didn't get to the point. Well, you know what? That is important. But the main thing is what are the objectives? coming from the manual so let's use the manual as our foundation when you are an evaluators do you know most evaluators do not even read the manual they're not even reading a project they're not even talking to the speakers before they go and speak that's a problem so as an evaluator, your job is to do that in advance, okay? Also, when, you, when you're speaking, keep in mind as an evaluator, don't say what they should have done. Don't, you know, because you, there is no right or wrong. Just speak from your own personal experience. And, you know, you can say, you know what, as I saw you, this is what I noticed. This is what, this is how you made me feel, you know, when you made this statement or you use this visual aid. I couldn't really see it. It would have been great if you would have sp spoken louder because now a person, you know, because what works for you, what you didn't like, it may, you know, not be true for someone else. So you can never, don't be that evaluator saying, oh yeah, you know, we were all just impressed. Everybody loved your speech because you're lying. You cannot speak for everybody. You can only speak for you. And so you speak from your own position. This is how I saw you. This is what I felt. This is what I seen. And this is how I believe you achieved the objectives based on X, Y, Z that you did and leave them walking away knowing what their strengths are. 
okay, there's areas of opportunity. They messed up here. Maybe they could have did this better, but they need to know their strengths. They need to know, well, the one thing you did very, very well is when you use uh, this specific visual aid, it was very impactful to me because it made me, reminded me of X, Y, and Z, and this is a strength of yours. So walk, have them walk away knowing what their strengths is and feeling excited to deliver their next speech. You know, um, you know, so point one, two or three things that they did out really, really well. All right. So do that. Do that. Do that. Uh, and don't focus too much on the negative and know how to critique or uh, or evaluate based on the level that the speaker's on. You, I would not evaluate a person doing their icebreaker the same way I would with someone who's already given 30 speeches in an advanced manual. And I want to tell you, let's let, let's transition a bit. Let's go to this book. So right here in the book, it says, put some variety into evaluations. The evaluations described above are the most common methods that the clubs use, which are here. Okay. We talk, talking about talking with the club members, listen carefully and all that good stuff. Evaluate your own efforts. That's the common stuff you hear. But this is something that's a very uncommon. They say your club can occasionally try and benefit from other evaluation programs too. Here are some suggestions. Now, specialized evaluations. Each evaluator uh, is assigned a particular part to evaluate. For example, one evaluator is assigned to open is assigned to evaluate the opening of all three prepared speeches. While another is assigned to evaluate the organization of all three. That's pretty interesting. So that way you can have three evaluators, but one person, they just focusing on openings, another person focusing on organization. And, and so now that's, that's adding a little variety. That's a special evaluation. I like that. Try that. Switch things up. Then it says you can do a panel discussion. All evaluators evaluate all speeches or leadership roles. Um, making notes or items which they feel need emphasis to discuss. The general evaluator then leads the discussion with the evaluators too. If enough time is available, the audience can comment. So this is kind of what they call like a round robin where at where all the evaluators are getting involved um, uh, 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 in this evaluation. That's a great idea as well. Here's another one. Now this one is interesting right here on the bottom. I want to touch this one. It says, stop the speaker's evaluation. All right, I'm going to make my I'm going to move this up so you can see it. So right here it says the evaluator stops the speaker or leader and gives immediate reaction. For example, if the speaker's voice is too soft, the evaluator would stop the speaker and say, "I can't hear you. Speak louder." Or the evaluator may stop the leader and say, "You may want to offer some specific suggestions for improving the meeting, right?" Um of course, the speaker or leader must agree to this before this type of evaluation because it can be very distracting. But I think, th see, these type of suggestions here are unconventional and they can add spice and fun into the meeting. And as long as we talk with the speakers beforehand and say, are you okay if we do this? I think they can make the meeting very interesting, add some really fun commentary. And it, to me, it can be more like real life because in real life, everyone is going to always just quietly speak and listen to you in these speeches. So uh, there's just some great ideas. Another one, it says speakers and leaders uh, are recorded on video and the recordings are reviewed during the meeting. Um, each evaluator refers to the video as he gives his verbal evaluation to illustrate the points that they're making. Or the speakers and leaders may review their recording privately. In another variation, the evaluator, speakers, or leaders meet to later review and both evaluate the presentation. Maybe there's something we can do. We got like Facebook Live. Maybe you can record it on Facebook Live. And then afterwards, we play the video and, and give, you know, feedback and, you know, uh, something, you know, like that. I mean, there's so many ideas on how we can do this, guys. Audio record speakers can uh, record the recordings and be evaluated during the club in the manner, just like the video evaluations. I mean, there's so many ideas. But uh, the main thing is, is that we use our tools. We look at the magazine 
magazine, Toastmaster magazine. They have great articles and, and suggestions to, on how to evaluate. Uh, look at the manual. We need to read these manuals, okay? And we can even use some of the ballot forms. And, you know, I, I know in our club, we have this evaluation checklist that our general evaluators use. And they go by, we have it laminated and they just mark out boxes on the checklist. So there's a lot of different things that we can use, but we want to use our tools and constantly work on our proving. Because remember, the evaluation is what keeps, mo that is the thing that separates Toastmasters from most other clubs, other organizations, is that they get that opportunity to get feedback. So let's make this an important and an impactful part of every meeting by beginning to make sure that we prepare ourselves, we study, uh, we get trained to be an evaluator so that you're not just uh, giving um, uh, an evaluation that is ineffective. So with that being said, Thank you for listening. I am Jackson360. That's Dwayne Jackson. If you want to learn more, subscribe to my YouTube page. I think it's uh it's the platform partners. It's Dr. Jackson360, I believe. Uh, if you look me up, just look up the uh, Jackson360. Look up the platform partners channel. Also, I have a school online where I teach about. Uh, it's called the Business Boot Camp. If you go there, you can see some of our public speaking classes and things like that. That's available. You can find it just by literally clicking right here. Here's one of my classes here on uh, connecting with any audience, uh, overcoming the stage fright. And literally these classes are here. Uh, and I just really, and I've been a Toastmaster and I've been taking on this thing and I, I've transformed. When I first started, they had to almost pull me out of the bathroom as they were introducing me because I was so nervous and afraid. Now I've traveled across the world. I went from, you know, rookie to rock star and I'm still learning every single day. So with that being said, I hope this helped and I, I hope I can continue to help in the future. I am Dwayne Jackson and let me see if I can pull up this YouTube page again so I want to be able to give y'all the right page uh, here. In fact, what I'll do is I'll put it in the link of the description because I want you guys to be able to use this video uh, as best as as best as you can. Platform Partner 360. Just type that up and my information will come through. Here it is. Uh, Jackson 360, your platform partner. Subscribe to my YouTube page and I look forward to sharing more tips with you. All right. Thank you.